Drag and drop functionality is everywhere on the web today. And if you've ever wondered how you can implement drag and drop in your own applications, well then you are in the right place because today we are going to use Stencil to build these reusable drag and drop components. We'll be able to sort items within their own list as well as move items between different lists. So if that sounds interesting to you, then stick around and we'll jump right on into it. Welcome folks, and thank you so much for joining me. I'm really excited because today we're going to be learning how to build this awesome drag and drop component using Stencil. Now, drag and drop functionality can be a little bit difficult to implement. So to help us out, we're going to be using a JavaScript library called Sortable.js. And Sortable is really going to help us simplify our drag and drop logic. So without further ado, let's jump on into the code. All right, first things first. Whenever I'm creating a new component in Stencil, I like to start with a scaffold of what the component is going to look like when I use it in an HTML file. So in our case, we're going to have two key elements. We're going to have our drag and drop container, and then as children to that container, we're going to have these draggable items. And they'll have attributes like a task title, due date, assignee avatar, but we can really put anything we want here. I do this because now this will serve as our guide as we go and create our components. Now, I've gone ahead and already created our draggable item component, and you'll see that it's largely presentational. We take in a few properties as strings, and then we display them in our JSX below. I've also set up a few styles in our CSS file, but that's really it for this component. I'll leave a link below to the GitHub repo for this project, so if you want to dive deeper into this component, you can check it out there. The reason this component is so simple is because all of our drag and drop logic is going to be in our container component. So let's go ahead and get started by creating a new component called drag and drop container. The first thing we want to do is take in a prop for a container title and then display that title in our JSX. While we're at it, let's add some styles in our CSS file. Okay, moving back over to our component, the next thing we wanna do is create a draggable area within our component. We can do that by wrapping our slot element in a div that will serve as our draggable area. To make use of this, we'll need a reference to that area. So I'll create a variable called container of type HTML element. And to connect these, we can use the ref attribute on the div so our container ref points to this element. And with that reference in place, we're all set to start using sortable. Let's first add it to our project by running npm install sortable.js. And then we'll have to add the sortable script tag in our index.html file. Once we do that, we can move back to our container component and import sortable at the top. Now we can finally use sortable by calling sortable.create. And if we pass our container ref, sortable will take that and turn that div into a draggable area. We can also pass a lot of different options to sortable.create, but for now we'll just set the animation speed to 150 milliseconds. Now you may be wondering why we put this block in the component did load method. Well, in order for us to use our container reference, we have to wait until it's assigned in our render method. Once it's assigned, then we can make use of it. So we put this in component did load because it runs after our render method in the component lifecycle. And pause. Now, if you're anything like me, you might be thinking that we're finished here, but there's actually one small thing preventing sortable from working. Let's take a look. The reason our drag and drop isn't working yet is because our component is using the shadow DOM. The shadow DOM provides both style and DOM encapsulation, and because of that, Sortable isn't able to reach in and manipulate the DOM nodes in our component. Fortunately for us, there's a quick fix we can do here, and that's changing shadow to scoped. By doing this, we still get style encapsulation, but now Sortable is able to manipulate the elements within our component. So now our drag and drop component works in isolation, but what happens if we want to drag elements between different containers? Well, Sortable has an answer for that. All we have to do is first take in a property called group, and then we can set the group option within sortable.create to the group specified in the property. This way, drag and drop containers that have the same group will now be able to share elements. So in practice, this means we can create multiple drag and drop containers within our application, and as long as we give them all the same group, let's say Kanban, now all of their children are shareable. We're almost done, but as one final flourish, I wanna take advantage of the ghost class option. This option allows us to provide a class name that we can use to style the space where a draggable element will be dropped. Now we can go in the CSS of our draggable item and add a style to be applied whenever the ghost class is given to our item. And Sortable does this anytime an item is dragged. And there we have it. 
Just like that, we have our very own reusable drag and drop component that we can use anywhere in our applications. And the crazy thing is, we didn't even scratch the surface of what you can do with Stencil and Sortable. So feel free to check out the code on GitHub and play around with it, see what you can build. I really hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. And if you want to see more tutorials like this, feel free to let me know what you want me to cover. Thank you guys so much for joining me and I will see you in the next one. Bye.